Welcome, everybody. I'm Kyle Hines, and I'll be hosting the Players Podcast, a GTM family production in partnership with the EuroLeague Players Association. I will be having in-depth conversations with current and former EuroLeague players about important topics that many athletes face on and off the basketball court. Stay tuned for more episodes. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to a special edition of the Players Podcast presented by the Euro League Players Association. Today, I have a very special guest, a legendary figure, um, a global, you know, basketball, to me, a global basketball icon for all the things that he that he's accomplished and all things that he's continuing to accomplish. Um, a 10-year NBA pro, captain of the Israeli national team, a 2018 NBA champion with the Golden State Warriors, and a current member of the Maccabi Tel Aviv basketball team. My guy, Omri Caspi. Omri, what's going on, man? Good, real good, my brother. I really appreciate it. Thank you for, for having me. Oh, man, anytime, man. Thank you, man. Thank you for uh, for taking the time like we spoke about, man. First of all, man, I just want to say um, I'm happy to see you back on the court. I know that, you know, you had some, you know, injuries and some challenges, you know, that way. But um, I'm happy to see you back. I mean, I think, you know, basketball in general, especially yeah. EuroLeague basketball, is is better off seeing you on the court, uh, man. So I'm welcome, man. I hope, like I said, man, I hope you stay injury-free and you uh, you continue to uh, you know, compete. Thank you. It's been, uh, it's been a long process you know of, of unfortunate uh, uh, kind of set of events uh, back to back um, not being able to play and being my teammates out there competing you know but one thing that that helped me to hold my head above water was you know my teammates mm-hmm. uh, my guy Hotel Hunter you know I would never guy. forget um, <laughs> yeah that's my guy guy he's like my brother so yeah. You know, when I got hurt, for one of the first thing he told me was like, "Army, take your time to recover. I got you. We got yeah. you. You know, and and we're gonna hold it down. You know, and when you have a brotherhood like this, you you appreciate the camaraderie. And you know, and at the end of the day, it's all about. That's what it's all about. You know, mm-hmm. the game is the game. Well, I love the game, but the camaraderie, the brotherhood, the relationship we built throughout the years, um, just like no other. Yeah, man. Like you said, I mean, that's the that's the best part about the game. Um, to me, you know, just the, the brotherhood. I think a lot of people don't understand that unless you're actually like, you know, involved in it and you're, and you're part of it every day. Um, and you mentioned Othello. I mean, Othello is one of my most favorite teammates, you know, of all time. You know, we we still chatted up and we still conversate to this day, man. He's 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 a great guy, man. Yeah. And, and you know, at the end of the day and, and the things you guys have accomplished with the Player Association, it's just remarkable. You know, it's, you. it's an amazing time to be a EuroLeague player now, you know. Uh, from from the player association taking care of players travel to the stickers on the court to um, having your own room and, and being able to sleep better uh, to have the exit row on the plane yeah uh, and to me what was amazing was throughout COVID you know the protection and you felt like you have somewhere to you know to kind of you, you have somebody backing you up and and in representation you know within the Euro League within the teams and everything else it's just um, a privilege to be a part of that the player association and then Cody's to you guys for, for setting that up. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. As long as we continue to have the support, you know, from the, from the players, um, like yourself, um, you know, I think that we can continue to see this grow and hopefully, you know, you know, when me and you were, you know, old and, you know, long and done, I mean, we could sit back and, you know, say that, you know, that your league is, was better off because of the players association and we can be proud, no, you know, of your league basketball, you know, what, it, what it was accomplished. No question. And I think uh, players must understand two things. One, there's there's a really good NBA player association and mm-hmm. there's a lot to learn and, and, and some of the correlations that we can do with them. And also what, what young players should understand is that, you know, I'm 32, uh, yeah. soon to be in this summer, I'll be 33, you know, and, and it's, it's important for, for what you guys are doing and to be a part of this is for the future generation to, exactly. to protect their future and to be able to play. And, you know, listen, at the end of the day, we're going to be done in a couple of years, right? Yeah. It is what it is. But now there's a 20 year old coming up that, you know, in the U S or, or elsewhere, we we're setting the stage for them to have a better on the court career, but also off the court and everything you guys have been doing. It's just amazing. The business development stuff, the, the meetings, the calls, the, the Instagram and social media programs, all that is, is, is phenomenal. It's just the base, the base of, of just amazing things for you to come. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. Like I said, that that means a lot, you know, especially for for somebody. uh, Yeah, if somebody coming from you, somebody that's, you know, that has experienced almost everything and, you know, been a part of, you know, so many great teams and great organizations. So that means a lot, man. Yeah, absolutely. 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 It's fun. 
I want to start off, we're going to go back a little bit to, to June 25th, 2009, um, the NBA draft. Wow. Um, so for you, you know, what was that feeling like? And not only the feeling for you, but the feeling for, you know, the country of Israel. I mean, you were, you're a pioneer, you're a trailblazer in, in, in yourself. I mean, being that the first Israeli born player to not only be drafted, but to also play in the NBA. So what was that day? And what was that moment like for you? Um, especially? It's a, it's a day and a moment, you know, I'll cherish forever. Um, mm -hmm. In the end of the day, the, the whole the work and, and you know, what each player have to go through uh, throughout his life and career to get to that point, to be drafted, to, to be able to play in that league and, um, is, uh, is just a remarkable thing. You know, uh, obviously being the first was, something that was a part of that. Um, but at, at the same time, I was just feeling, you know, honored and humbled to be in that position, to, to be able to represent my family, to mm -hmm. myself, my family, my community, my city, my country in the United States, um, play for different organizations and different, uh, different styles and, and, and different players and to make friends, friendships uh, throughout the way. Uh, it all started on, on June 25th, 2009 for me, you know, and my life changed from one end to another on that day, right? Uh, I was I was a, a player from Maccabi. I played EuroLeague at the time. I was honored to play EuroLeague. EuroLeague is an unbelievable league uh, with unbelievable players. And suddenly, you know, you, you, you get to the NBA and, and you represent not just yourself anymore. You know, there's people looking up to you and you need to, to do more. You need to do for the community, all that sort of stuff. So it's it's a great you know feeling you know it's a day that you know i know how many players have tried to make it yeah. and and couldn't for some some reasons as well so honored you know and I, and, I, and i promised myself when i started and i stepped foot on the basketball court that you know i always going to be the hardest will try at least to be the hardest worker and to stay humble and and true to the you know to the game of basketball i love the game i love i love my teammates and, and this is something that i always uh, pride myself with did you understand the magnitude of, of your accomplishment, you know, when you were drafted? Like, you know, obviously no. you were 21 years old, but did you understand like the meaning that it had not only to like yourself, mm -hmm. but, you know, to like I said, entire, entire, you know, country or, you know, group of people? No, you know, honestly, and, and on so many different levels from, from, from a basketball perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Getting into in 2009, that was before social media. That was yeah. before tw it's literally Twitter just started Facebook. You know, basketball games in the NBA weren't televised as much as today. You know, mm -hmm. I, you know there were in the NBA TV. I didn't know what what to expect getting into a locker room now as a 21 year old, 20, 21 year old into an NBA locker room. And it was a different times, too. You know, now NBA you know, back then, you know, you had you had some some serious characters sometimes in a locker room. You know, it was yeah. tough. You had to go out and prove yourself. There's a lot of one on one game. It was. It was, it was, you know, training camp was, was, was hard, you know, getting to training camp first day, you know, you do the, the easy runs and, and all the Byron Scott and Pet Riley type workouts tough, you know, mm -hmm. and, and guys were going at you. And today the game has changed a little bit. Now the game is a lot faster. She a lot more three. So yeah. it was different times. And from that perspective, it was a total culture change and, and a shock in a sense, right. To, to move into a new country and to, to kind of at a 21, it's different. And, and, but also from, you know, just from a business perspective and, you know, the, the, the privilege that I had to, to meet so many amazing people, basketball players and business people and cultural people and singers and artists and all that sort of stuff to, to be able to get to know them and to kind of pick their brain. I remember me and Andre Godala used to sit and talk about Elon Musk, dude, yeah. like, you know, like <laughs> how he thinks, you know, yeah. like, you know, yeah. it's like. He was like, I just, we just had dinner with, like, Andre was like, I just had dinner with him last night and you just see the way he thinks. And he started, you know, I'll start picking his brain on like how to handle situations. And I'm like, dude, you know, this is, this is unbelievable. So to be able to be in that position, the NBA has opened that door, right? And, yeah. Uh, it just, it was fun. When was, when was the moment at, at 21 when you got to your rookie year? that you realized that you were an NBA player? Did you have like, you know, that moment that was like, like I'm here, like, was it your first game? Was it like, you know, a little on down the line? Was it training camp? When was it, when was that realization like really hit you? Hmm, I don't know, it's a good question. That's a good question right there. I don't know. Uh, the thing that sit with me is the first time we played Kobe. 
mm-hmm. at, at Staples. Mm-hmm. Uh, may he rest in peace. Um, we played them in training camp. There's always Sacramento playing the Lakers in training camp in Vegas. It was a big event. Uh, but the first time when we went to Staples and, and you know, uh, the announcer there has a, just a different, different, just a different presentation the way he uh-huh. represents the players in LA, <laughs> like a deep voice and, uh-huh. and, and, you know, you're playing at Staples and, and, and you see Kobe and, you know, when, you know, me growing up, it was Michael and then, and then AI and Shaq, but mm-hmm. it was Kobe, you know, it was Kobe. Uh, there was the time when LeBron was starting to pick up and become, you know, the, the you know, LeBron. But he was still Kobe, so playing against him, and you see just his mentality, and he's holding his jersey like this, and he's pissed, and we're up at halftime. We're like, dude, we got him. You know, we up 20 points at halftime. We're like, oh, that's not that bad. We got him. And then you start seeing him, zoom, shooting threes, and, and then they beat him at the buzzer, and Kobe made the three-point shot to win the game. We're up two. Kobe made the three-point shot to beat the game. We're like, damn. That's how it is, huh, that's, Kobe? That's how he does it, huh? But, that's what um, the NBA is all about. <laughs> but, but it was, oh, boy, you know, we are young, 21, thinking we got him, you know? And yeah. the second half, you know, just you don't know, look him in the eye, you know? But he was tough. He was great. But, you know, playing against the greats, you know, it's like you go to sleep the night before of a game, and you're like, dude, I'm playing the Lakers tomorrow. You know, yeah. that's 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 something you dreamed of as, as, a, as a young player. Now, how, how do you separate that as, like, you know, like you said, as a young player, um not being too much of a fan um because do you, do you mm. did you have like obviously you, you talked about Kobe but did you have like anybody else specifically where it was like like I'm playing against such and such or I'm playing against AI like did you have like a fan moment did you have to catch mm. yourself like in the middle of a game anytime or anything like that yeah, yeah the good thing about 2000 2009 draft yeah you know we you know when young young players now looking in you know, J- Blake Griffin was number one. James mm-hmm. Harden was number three. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steph was number seven. Mm-hmm. We had Damar, I think, number nine. Right? Ty Lawson, Drew mm-hmm. Holiday, Derek Collison. We had a lot of good players. James Johnson, we had a lot of good players in the draft. But we're all, you know, Steph, maybe now is, the, you know, James and Steph are the biggest stars in our draft. But now, you know, when we grew up, it was, it was KG, you yeah. know, and Kobe and, yeah. and, and Shaq and like Dwayne Wade. And we just won a championship with Miami. So, you started, you know, we, we had a game against, um, I think it was the Celtics. We played Ray, Paul Pierce, and KG. Mm-hmm. And you go into a box out on the rebound, you got to box out KG. And KG <laughs> started to make these noises to you. And it's like, <laughs> I'm like, dude, KG is about to be pissed. But I'm like, you know, it's my nature. I'm like, man, you know, whatever. I'm about to take this man out. You know, KG. Yeah. Um, but you know, Paul Pierce getting mad. You know, he's being a little cheapy and dirty sometimes. But it was an it was an honor. You know, these are the best of the best, and, and it was just an honor to play with these guys. You know? So it's like, let's compete. When you, when you step into the court, it was always about a privilege to play the game of basketball, to mm-hmm. represent, to be there for my teammates, just compete. No, I agree. I agree. Now, when you first came over and you got drafted by Sacramento, how difficult? Or how easy was the transition, you know, for you both on and off the court? And then was there something about Sacramento or about NBA life that surprised you, um, you know, during your rookie year that you, you know, didn't expect or, or anything like that? Yeah, well, a lot of things uh, kind of hit me by a surprise, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the travel, uh, mm-hmm. the amount of games we played and the intensity of of playing night in and night out, you know. At the time, playing Euro League was there's two games a week, there's yeah. the Euro League and, and Euro League game, and you know, we respect every opponent we played against, but the intensity and the, like, the speed of the game, the intensity of the game is not the same playing Israel League to Euro League, and, yeah, and then you, you suddenly start playing, and then suddenly you start playing the Lakers and the Cavaliers on a back to back. So you gotta you gotta be there, and it's transition. You gotta make and learn how to bring yourself night in and night out, you know? And now I actually enjoy that we play more games uh, in the EuroLeague. And mm-hmm. I don't know what you think about that, but I think the more it, it's fun to compete at this level. And I think fans are cherishing and people in Europe are respecting the game in a, in a certain manner that, you know, they love their teams and it's great to play. I mean, you go to play, you know, play you guys in Milan and it's great. And then you go to Panathinaikos, we have Panathinaikos soon or, you know, Cheska and it's all different environment. It's just great to play, you know? So it's, it's just a fun, it's just different, you know? And so the amount of game, the intensity, uh, the travel, mm-hmm. uh, 
it's kind of a shock. And then it, it, I think I hit the wall. It took me, you know, a couple, a couple months into the season when I hit the wall, like I was really fatigued, you know, and I'm just mm-hmm. learning how to take care of my body and stretch and drink a lot of water and food and massage and all that. And back then we didn't have a massage therapist. You know, at wow. the time it was like nobody really knew what I wanted to, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I'll finish your practice, Kyle. I, I, you know, I need, I need, you know, I need yeah, the, the massage before and after practice. The massage therapists are best friend now. <laughs> Ice bath, like who knew about that? You know, now I'm like, oh, I'm coming to, I'm icing. I need yeah, my 10 minutes, yeah, you know. Yeah, so yeah. it's just different. It's just different times. Now, uh, for me, I'm a I'm a fan of your league, and I just want to get your perspective about when you first started out, and you kind of came along where Maccabi was at its height um, in 2004, 2005, when they won those back to back champion year league championships. Right. Now, as a young player growing up, and I know you had just started, you know, within the youth program around that time, but. What was it like to, you know, to experience that as a young player to, you know, experience, you know, those championships and, you know, experience Derek Sharp and Anthony Parker and, oh. you know, you know, uh, Nukle- uh, Nikolai uh, Vujicic and, you know, and, and Sadis yeah. and, and all these guys, I mean, and, and, and the legendary coaching staff that you guys have, like, you know, what was that like for you? It was an unbelievable, humbling experience. Uh, the, I think one of the, the, biggest hurdles for international players is the jump from the junior levels yeah. to the professional levels. Many, many guys, you know, in, in the U.S., you know, whether whether it's okay or not, it's a different story, but they have that program that they go into college and they have the transition, some sort of Makes transition to play, like mm-hmm. from high school, yeah, and then they go to college. And then they go to the league or they go to Europe. In, in Europe, you're 18-year-old, 17-year-old, and suddenly you got to compete with, really good basket like the level in your league is unbelievable yeah like i'm li- really really good you know and, and teams are playing at such a high level so from a seven so 17 year old you know at the at the time it was Charles the point guard tal bush then was the two guard he was mm-hmm. really good ap was three maceo mm-hmm. baston was four nicola was five Derek sharp coming off the bench david blutenthal all these guys yeah. you know with nba experience your league experience championship under their belt Pini was the coach. David Wall was assistant. Don mm-hmm. Shamir was a third assistant. Mm-hmm. Like, think about it. it was, and you need to learn. And, you know, as a young player, you I, I was just anxious. And I just wanted to, like, what is it like? How yeah. is it, you know, what is, you know, some of the, method, you know, the defensive, you know, segments? How do you do that? How do you play that? And then, you know, you're anxious to learn. What is it like in the NBA? How many shoes do you have? I yeah. wanted to have a lot of Nike <laughs> shoes. You know, yeah. the time yeah, like, yeah the, the, the simple like, things, you right? You have your own locker. Yeah. yeah, you have your own locker, and you get all kinds of shoes you want. Like, yeah. All kinds of shoes. Like, whoa, this is heaven. Yeah, facts. Oh, man. Facts. Yeah. You're telling me I can get Nike? I'm like, yeah, you go to the equipment guy, you can switch shoes every practice. We got guys coming in. Oh, oh play basketball like that? Mm-hmm. Oh. So just to learn, you know, is, is you know, and it's still, yeah, I see young guys now and try to, to kind of help them and share some of my experiences and, and, and do that. You know, it's, it's just a, it's a good position to be in. Now, I want to uh, circle back to the to the 2017-2018 um, Warriors team. Um, you were a part of that team, um, you know, you know um, throughout the throughout the majority of the season. Um, so just what was that experience like to play with those group of guys, you know, you know, Steph, Draymond, all those guys. I mean, what just what was that experience like? And then did you talk about like, you know, the Warriors way, like everybody always talks about, you know, Steve Kerr and the organization and how is it just different? Can you, can you speak about that? Yeah, you know, it taught me a lot about the game of basketball, mm-hmm. you know, and made me think a lot different on many things. Um, from the respect that Steve gave the players, um, and the, I mean, they earned it obviously, but Steve was the first coach that I've seen him come into the locker room and say, Hey guys, what do you think we should do here? You know, how do we stop, you know, whatever mm-hmm. Lou Williams coming up, you know, coming off the screen. And, and, and there was some sort of a, a discussion between, you know, the guys, the vets usually, but, you know, Andre and Draymond and KD and, you know, stuff and clay and they, they'll talk and they'll figure it out mm-hmm. and coach will say, okay, I like it. And, and they go with it, you know, and, and, and they, and, and they, they understand, you know, I, like to me, 
us as competitors, sometimes coaches over trying to over kind of teach the game. And yeah. Like we get it. We want to win really bad yeah. and we want to compete. You know, we made it for a reason, right? You are the best power forward center in Europe for the last 10 years oh, and thank you. for a reason, you know, and like, unbelievable, right? Like you talk about me, but I don't want to talk about you for a second. Like, <laughs> thank you. I'm, I'm seeing you in the game. I see you the way you touch defensively and the way, you know, you touch the little things, you rebound, you pass, your understanding of the game. So like, I want, like Steve was the first that like, hey Draymond, so Draymond was like, hey, don't let him come on, like running downhill on you. Let's let's go up on him. Mm -hmm. The big should be up there with him. You know, so little things like that, that, that was the Warriors, you know, and, and, and he, sometimes you come to practice, it's like, guys, get what you need, you know, yeah. get what you need today, no practice. So you go in you get your lift, you get some shots, you don't want to get shots, don't like, come ready to play tomorrow. And, and then you appreciate that and you have that connection that you have responsibility on your shoulder more than just like, I'll need to teach you how to do this. And then guys are like, all right, let's, let's go, you know, mm -hmm. it's time to lace up and go. Um, so the guys are just unbelievable, you know, like good guys, smart, you know, the locker room was so important. Um, and, and for a reason that they, they, they're one of the best teams to, to ever, I mean, KD, Steph, Clay, yeah. Andre, Draymond, it's like Sean Livingston, that's they a, did West. I always so, say that's like a, it's like a, a it's like a, it's like a video game team. It's like when you were younger and you were like, you know, created the, <laughs> the, the all-star team with yeah. a video game. That's, that's real life right there. Yeah. But this, this was the respect, you know. So mm -hmm. David West was a very vocal leader in the locker room. And the, the refs give you the respect. You know, we used to talk to the refs all the time. So, you know, they, they used to give us, you know, they didn't call as much fouls and stuff. You know, you can get away with more. So those little things, in the end, they, they you know, they come into, you, you want to beat the Warriors, you need to be playing really, really good. And it's, you know, if you play like seven games serious, you got to play, you got know, to face these guys for seven games. It's really tough. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. A funny question I have is this, how often are you wearing your championship ring? Are you just wearing it around the house? Are you just, you know, <laughs> every once in a while, bringing it out, talking about, you know, I'm, I'm going here, you know, the, the beach is that where you put it on your <laughs> pinky figure every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, my, my, we have a, we keep it at a house. Uh -huh. um, I look at, I look at it every once in a while. I, you know, when you, when you get a ring, yeah, the, the team gets you one for your family as well. Okay, so I got one That's for nice. my wife, That's nice. and I got one for my my parents. I give them a gift. Uh, my wife got it for, as a gift from the team. You yeah. get one for yourself. You get one for your wife. Uh, and and then I got one for my parents. A, that's a dream come true right there. I mean, you said you're part of a, uh, yeah. of a of a of a, a, a loose exclusive club. You know, of people that you know have those and own that jewelry, man. So that, that has to be a special film. It's definitely an honor. I mean, to tell me what it's like to feel like you won your league championships and, and you've been in. It's just when you win, it's just a different. It's also a different relationship, right? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 an incredible feeling. I mean, especially like you, we talked about a little bit earlier about the brotherhood, you know, so when you see those guys and, you know, even if you're on different teams or you're in different situations, you always have that connection. So when you see the, you know, in your league's a little bit different, you get the little miniature trophies, but when you see the trophy and you, you know, it uh, automatically brings you back to those experiences and, and those moments. And, you know, that's, I think, you know, what we all enjoy the most in sports and especially team sports, you know, those moments that we get a chance to share with those guys that we have, you know, forever. So you feel like for you, you know, obviously money is part of, of yeah. what we do, but you know, the competitive nature and winning championship means, means the world, no? It's the, it's, it's the reason why we do this. It's the reason why, you know, why we wake up every day, the reason why, you know, we're still at our age, you know, still, you know, competing and still, you know, going out every day. Um, it's a, it's a high, I guess you can say, you know, and, and once you, you know, get, a, get that feeling or even get close to that feeling, you know, you're still chasing it. It's, it, it, it's addictive. That's exactly right. what it is. It's addictive. I right. mean, and it's like, and then the, I guess the, the great thing and also the bad thing I feel about athletics is that, um, you know, we win a championship, you win a title. Um, but then as soon as that's over, you got to start focusing on the next season. So it was like, you never really get a chance to fully, really enjoy it to really, you know, soak up the full experience because like you said, you're really, you're coming back and you're chasing that, that, that addictive feeling, you know, right back the next year. So man, I love it, man. I and love they're it. coming right back, you know, competition, yeah. competition is coming right back. And you know, what, what's me, what gets to me is, you know, Michael, it, you know, when he won one, he, he wanted two, you know, he won three, you know, he already was thinking in his yeah. mind, 
five. All right, I'm, people are like, why is he making signal of six? He just, he, he's already, you know, yeah. on his, this is, you know, it's just a, it's a different, you know, it's a different mic. I love it. You know, I completely agree. Now you, you came back to EuroLeague um, and you decided to sign with Maccabi. Um, so talk about first, you know, what was the decision in coming back? Um, you know, what it meant to you? And then what was the biggest difference? You know, you left Maccabi as a 21 year old and now you're coming back, came back, you know, as a, you know, a 30 plus, you know, year old player with, you know, tons of, you know, tons of experience. Um, you know, what was that, what was that, you know, what was that experience coming back for you? Mostly, you know, I always respected the Euroleague league so much that, you know, I, I always promised myself that I want to play, you know, at the highest level, as mm -hmm. long as my body will allow me. And I felt, you know, being in the league is great. It's an amazing time, but I still have some, some stuff that I want to accomplish myself in, in the Euroleague. league. And Maccabi mm -hmm. was a home for me. I grew up, I played for Maccabi junior team at the age of 13, 14. Yeah. I turned pro, I played professionally for Maccabi for three years before I got drafted. And it was natural for me to come back. My wife wanted to be home. Mm -hmm. um, our family is here. It's comfortable for us. So the biggest difference is, you know, you leave and you come back, you have a ton of experience and, you know, your role is different. And what the team is expecting you on and off the court is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, you know, at this point, you know, the only thing that is on our mind is just really to win. You know, yeah. unfortunately, this season has been up and ups and downs for us. It's been a crazy year, but you know, whether we we whether we able to get to the top, you know, to the top eight or not, we want to compete every night and win every game possible. And just being that one of these guys in the locker room to to kind of help my team and to to fuel the engine and to, to kind of push everybody to be better and. Uh, we have great leaders on our team, you know, and this is one thing that Maccabi has done well, you know, last year and this year as well. It's Scotty and Tello mm -hmm. and some of the rest of the guys in the locker room. We have guys that have been in situation and this, you know, at, at the end of the day, if you want to win at the highest level, experience is, is instrumental, right? It's key. It's it's key. Just guys that have been there, yeah, and guys that you've been, you know, Othello been in the league, you know, guys that have experience and they've been in situation and they and they understand dynamics of season and all these sort of stuff it all comes together so you know we we're focused on trying to i'm focused on trying to help the team win and play the highest level for a couple more years and and then they go from there what do you enjoy the most about the euro league and euro league basketball um for me it's we talked about before is the competition it's just the night in right. night out like there's no i always say you know the knock on the nba is the load management i like there's no load management in euro league like you know you have to come and you have to play wow. every night no matter if you're playing you know the top team or you're playing the the bottom team so you know what do you enjoy the most about euro league basketball no, I completely agree with you. And I, and I would add to that is that, you know, the atmosphere of a game is mm -hmm. like when you play a regular season game, you know, anywhere pretty much, it's not as, you know, the fans are not getting crazy. Here, you come into Tel Aviv, you go into Panet to Greece, you know, to Serbia, fans are going crazy, ballistic, mm -hmm. right? You know, they, they, they're going, you know, it's just a fun environment to play in. And um, I love the, the way the game is played, right? The game is, is the ball is moving from side to side. Mm -hmm. There's, there's, there's real, um, you know, there's real, uh, thesis behind everything that you yeah. do. Every possession counts And the league is like, okay, so you can lose a game, whatever. Here's like, yeah. we all have 34 games. It's different. So, but I, I it's just, do you ever feel like NBA season is, you know, 82 games is, is long and it's sometimes it's just, you know, maybe a little different, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I would, I would agree. I definitely would agree. I feel like you know, like I, like I said before, I think the Euro League is to, that's what makes the Euro League special and makes it so unique. Is that every game matters? Not even just every game; it's every possession. Like you can't even take a, a possession off on a majority of these games. So, um, and like you said, the and atmosphere. And what I'm surprised, what I'm surprised also is that not surprised. I'm actually, yeah. not surprised is that the, the NBA respects the Euro League players so much. Yeah, and you see guys that played in Europe for so many years. Anthony Parker now is a GM of the mm -hmm. D League team in, in mm -hmm. Orlando. Trajan Linden is this is the GM uh, of the of the New Orleans, I think mm -hmm. the Ornits now that used to be the Pelicans. So so you see and not only them, Thiago Slitter is yeah. with Brooklyn. I see yeah. a lot of guys that they have so much knowledge. Yeah. And we have uh, Devin Smith is with the Phoenix Suns, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, 
so many guys, it's like they have such basketball knowledge, experience, you know, and then these are professionals, you know, and, and you know, and you see sometimes college kids coming to play in Europe, they think, oh, it's, you know, they don't know. But then uh, uh, these, these these are grown men. These are professionals. Yeah. They, yeah. They've been in the league. They've been in the top level for so many years. They know, you know, everything. They have the respect. It's totally different, you know, so it's, it's great to know. It's great to see. It's great to see. Uh, you, you, Do you ever think about that, though? You ever think about going to the U.S. after when you retire to be kind of take the route of being a GM or a coach? Honestly, I mean that that's where um I think I'm leaning towards to to go into um some type of front office position. Um, I've talked a lot with uh, with Trajan. Um, got to know uh, talk a lot with Jr. Holden. Um, you know all these guys. Um, Where's Jr. Have, now? Jr. is with Brooklyn. Wow. Yeah, he's in Brooklyn. He, he's uh, part of their part of their front office group. I have you know talked to a bunch of friends that are you know that are, are involved. I seen <laughs> I seen Devin. Um, Devin lives um, in the tri-state area. I live in New Jersey. Devin, I think, lives in Delaware. Mm -hmm. So we see each other sometimes on the bike path. Um, so we always yeah. we always are always talking to each other. Um, but yeah, I think that's definitely where right. you know, I, I would want to go. What about yourself? Have you have you even thought about? It's, it's hard, you know. I, I mean, I love the U.S. I lived there yeah. for almost 11 years, and it's, you know, it has to be. You know, I love being. I love living there. It's it's a it's a difficult thing to do. Is is that your family is here, and yeah. you know, you want to bring your family with you as well. You know, and and it has to be something rewarding, such you know that you can make that jump. But I would definitely want to be involved in the game, right? I love the game. You know, whether it's Maccabi or with the U League or some other clubs. I love the game. So being uh, around the game is, is to me, is essential. Now, you, I want to talk a little bit about like the future is, of is, Israeli basketball. Um, where do you see, you know, obviously, um, you know, Denny, you know, who's been, you know, was a great prospect, yeah. you know, it was just drafted um, this past year. But, you know, where do you see it and, and how and, you know, I know you've done things. We'll talk about your foundation and, and different things in a, in a second. But, you know, where do you see the future, you know, of the game in Israeli basketball? And how much has it changed from the time that, like you said, you were drafted to now? Like I said, now I guess you're back home more and you're seeing and you're involved a lot more. So how has it changed? How Have you noticed, you know, more kids wanting to play basketball? You know, has you noticed, you know, yeah. the game has changed, the, the mentality of the of the game has changed there? That's a great question. I think, I think one, you can see a lot more kids now are, are wanting to be mm -hmm. around the game. I think the fact that social media has kind of opened uh, the venue, you can see clips and, yeah. you know, Steph Curry and LeBron and Katie and all these guys, you know, pretty much all the time, that opens up even more. Um, and one thing that I really like about the young kids now, uh, to a certain extent, right, is that, you know, they, they allow themselves to dream of making it, right? Mm -hmm. When I grew up, 13, 14 year old, you know, the discussion was always about just, turning professional, ma yeah. making it to the first Israeli league, you know, is that even possible? It's hard. The Americans are coming. The good players are coming. You have to compete, all that sort of stuff. Now, you you know, you have guys at 15, 16, it's like, I want to, I want to make it to the NBA. Mm -hmm. so, so to a certain extent, this is great, but also they need to understand that there's a lot of work needs to be done, right? These are, these are grown men over there. These are people that they work their butt off and their tail off every day um to 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 be the player they are right mm -hmm. and and so it's great to to, to dream in there but also you got to combine it with the passion of hard work and dedication and i think you know how, how much work have you put in right to be in the position that you are you know right you, it doesn't it doesn't happen just you wake up in the morning like this so i think this is something that they all got to understand and i think then he understands it now too yeah. you know to make the jump it's it's a tough league. You got to play with Russell Westbrook and Bradley Beal, which two are amazing superstars, and you got to fit in. It's different. Uh, it's a process. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think, and I want to give my, my kudos to you because I think that you're a big reason why that conversation has changed, you know, because I think the young kids, the young generation there have seen you accomplish it and seen all the things that you accomplished and now have the opportunity to see you come back. Um, you know, I think that is the reason why, you know, like you said, when you were 15, 16, you know, players were like, oh, I just want to make it to the Israeli League. Now players, you know, they see you, they see you come back, they see all things that you experienced, you know, and they're like, oh, man, like, you know, if Mari can do it, if Denny can do it, you know, I can do it. You know, they're from the same, you know, yeah, same country, absolutely. the same city as me. So, um, yeah, man, like I said, man, I think that 
I mean, to be a pioneer, to be a trailblazer, you know, of your, of your country, of your, you know, of your, of your generation is amazing, man. Like I said, man, I, my hat's off to you for, for taking on that. I mean, like I, really I said, cause I know it's it. not, it's not always easy. <laughs> there's some good with it. I know there's also no, some, there's some added pressure that comes with that as well. Then, you know, it actually relates to the foundation, you know, when, mm -hmm. when I started my, my work for the community per se, and, and what was going through my mind is actually two things. Uh, one, as, as first and foremost, I think, you know, I had the first time I had the opportunity to, you know, when we used to go to Washington or yeah. Philly, you know, the, you know, so the market or even like Alabama, right. We used to play the, 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 the Northwest. So we used to go to Alabama to see the Marcus family, you know, and mm -hmm. his mom used to take us to dinner, you know, so, or Baltimore, I had friends, Dante Green and Jason Thompson, all these mm -hmm. guys, staff, you know, they used to invite me and, I got, I got to experience, you know, their, you know, their culture and some of their experiences growing up. And I never had the chance. It's like, Hey, DeMarcus, come with me, you know, come see my family, you know, come, come see where I grew up. You know, yeah. let's build, we, we did you know, the player association. We built four basketball courts of the yeah. player association donation. So it was, it's a, it's, it's a great thing for me, you know, and it relates to, you know, when you see it with your eyes and, you know, it was important for me to see some of the guys to come with me and see where I'm from, my country, and what the people are about, and my experiences about, and come to my parents' house and have dinner. My mom would make, you know, some 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 chicken noodle soup, yeah. and some, some some you know whatever. So all these different things. It was the first time I had opportunity to do that, and you know, the, the best thing, the, the best memory I have is the Marcus kind of hugging my mom. Mm -hmm. And Rudy, you know, my family, we go to the beach, you know, and, and we go to Jerusalem and you experience that kind of stuff. So to me, it was, it was that was the magnitude of having that and kind of being in that position. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, me and Jason Thompson, were from the same area. So I when I talked to him and indirectly, when I talked to him JT about... Was, JT was at my... He was at my brother's wedding. Is that yeah, yeah? So I, I always so that's like that's why I feel like I kind of know you, but I don't like well, we talk to each other, but we haven't talked to each other because I talked to Jason so much about you, and he you know he has so many great things to say about you. But he he talked to me about you know his first time going overseas was actually through your foundation and through your trip. And he talked, you know, he came back right. and he was talking about so many great things and, you know, so much of the experience that he learned. And he said that, you know, when he went overseas, now he's playing in, you know, Spain and China and Turkey. Right. He said a lot of that, you know, the anxiety of him going overseas, you know, once he experienced, you know, the beauty of Israel and the beauty that you showed him, he was able to like go overseas and play and he wanted to explore the world. He wanted to do a lot more. So, mm -hmm. um, so just talk about that. Like talk about the, the reaction that you got from a lot of the guys, I mean, not only basketball players, but you had WNBA players, you had UFC, you had, you know, actors, right. you had, you know, right. people from the community. So, Absolutely. you know, talk about, you know, talk about the, 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 you know, what you, what the experiences they got and, you know, talk about the reaction from some of them. I mean, to, to, it's, it's a plat we have a platform, we have an opportunity, you know, it relates to the, the podcast, it yeah. relates to social media, it relates to the foundation is that we have an opportunity today to start, not to start, but to, to try to help a little bit, you know, in our position as, as athletes to kind of heal the world in a sense. Maybe it's a big mm -hmm. word, but to, to show and to, you know, we're so much more alike than we're not. And, you know, when DeMarcus or whoever posts a picture from a country, you know, a kid in Alabama is looking at saying, hey, you know, he's over there. You know, he's having a good time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll never forget the Marcus text would be the next day. You know, we got into Israel on Friday morning. And on Saturday morning, we had a trip uh, in Jerusalem. We stayed in Jerusalem the first two nights. And it kind of went to the Christian quarter, down to the, like, we, we did all sorts of, like, you know, there's a ton of history, you know, buildings of two, 3,000 yeah. years old. And for him to be able to witness, you know, his beliefs and his religion and he just texted me, I think it was like 9 a.m. I didn't make that trip. I was so mm -hmm. tired. I got in. I had to take care of everything. I did everything on my own. I was the, the manager of the trip, the flights, <laughs> everything. Uh -huh. And I could, I didn't make the trip. It was like 6 a.m. bus. I, he was on it. I couldn't make it. At 9 a.m., he texted me. He was like, this is a life-changing experience for me. You know, I, I get to witness this firsthand. Uh, it's, I'm unbelievable. So it's 
you know, it, it, it means a lot. You know, it's 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 an opportunity, it's a privilege to, to now social media kind of connects the whole world like that. You know, yeah. we can if if we are able to impact one kid in Alabama or anywhere else and to see the world in a better you know vision, oh man, it, it's worth it's worth it all. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the I was reading one of the quotes that you said that, you know, it's how sports is able to connect the world, you know, of people. And, you know, that was one of the most important parts of your foundation. So is it something that you're can, yeah. looking to continue to do these, uh, you know, these uh, these type of yeah. things, these type of tours? Absolutely. We, we had a plan actually to do it last summer. Yeah. You know, obviously, COVID postponed the whole thing. Um, but I think. I want to extend it more. I want to do business trips with, yeah. you know, athletes and, and, and to, to be involved with the, like, I know the players association, you guys are doing some, some business, you know, schools and stuff in Italy and from other places. Mm -hmm. I would love to, whatever, whatever I can do to help and be a part, I would love to, you know, Israel has a very uh, advanced high tech community yeah, um, and all sorts of stuff. Um, this is one thing that me and Tariq, the first conversation me and Tariq had, we are mm -hmm. on the way to our owners. We had like an opening season uh, event. Mm -hmm. So Tari came with me in the car and we just, you know, I started to pick his brain the way he sees mm -hmm. and, you know, how humble he is. You know, one of the, one of the first thing he told me was like, Omri, I'd love to go to meet new people. And it's, a, it's you know, God put me in this position mm -hmm. to inspire. And if people want to take pictures of me, it's great. I love it. You know, I'm, I'm here to do that kind of stuff. And you know, it just clicked to me that he was a special guy and we stayed in mm -hmm. great shape uh, uh, relationship up until the day. But to be in that, you know, go to Google and, and to learn how they accelerate startups and, you know, let's go meet this CTO and see some technology and, and pick, you know, pick his brain and how to do stuff. You know, and I think we're, we're, you know, basketball players are such a talented. I've been with some of the most talented people in the world. I, yeah. I always said that. Uh, so everything is possible, you know, everything is possible in life. Yeah, I mean, and it's such a, I mean, it's such a diverse community, especially here that we have in EuroLeague. And I think a lot of times, um, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this podcast was to give players the opportunity to, you know, to show the personalities. I think a lot of times, especially here yeah. in Europe, we don't get an opportunity to, you know, show who we really are, show, you know, talk about our likes, talk about different things. Um, so I wanted to give the fans That's and you know, the people a, a perspective, a, a totally different perspective. But what you mentioned, you know, with, uh, you know, what you're doing there in Israel, I would love, you know, for your league players to have an opportunity to take advantage, you know, of that, because, um, you know, many times, the Euro League is so much different than the NBA as far as traveling. You know, you get to go to a city, you're in the city for two, three, four days. You know, like you said, you get a chance to explore versus us. You know, we're going to a city. We may be in a city for 24 hours or something more or less. I've right. been to Tel Aviv. I've right. been to Israel so many times over my career, but I've never got a chance to really, you know, experience it and really get oh. a chance to to go out. So and I think I think my settlement will echo with a lot of your league players. Like, you know, you go to all these cities, you get a chance to ex see the city, but you never really get a chance to explore these countries. And I think that's the oh. one of the most beautiful parts about playing in Europe and playing in Euroleague, you know, having these opportunities. So, you know, I, I would love for, you know, for your league players to get more of opportunity to, ex to experience these type of things. Oh, absolutely. Uh, completely. I mean, first day is like, I think from there's so much, right? So you can yeah. start with Jerusalem and the history and uh, the Christian quarter and the Western Wall. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, the Dead Sea, uh, you know, one of the most amazing experiences is like you float on water, right? Yeah. It's like, and then it's such uh, an amazing feeling on your skin. You can't put your head into the water though. That's real salty. <laughs> but uh, after that, it's, it's an amazing thing. And then, and then we go up to Tel Aviv, some business technology, you go up north, there's all sorts of stuff from agriculture to, uh, you know, Sea of Galilee, right? Where, where mm -hmm. Jesus walks on water, right? Mm -hmm. That's, you know, the church and, you know, so much. You know, and and uh, you guys, you, first and foremost, you're my guest, my brother. Anytime uh, you come. For sure, man. I'm, well, I'm definitely, I'm going to take you, you up. Come, you know? I'm going to take up on that offer for <laughs> sure, man. Definitely, <laughs> definitely, man. But definitely, even man. the player association, so it's definitely an invite, open invite forever. Definitely, man. Now we're uh, want to get to your podcast. Um, so you recently started the podcast. I think you're 46, 47 yeah. episodes uh, deep or something exactly like that right. have been published. Yeah. So yeah. first of all, yeah. what made you want to get into the, the podcast media world? 
Uh, actually, like you touched on it, you know, I feel like sometimes play, like in, in, in general, people kind of perceive athletes as just athletes. And like, I want to talk about economy and I want to talk about technology and I want to talk about sports, which I love, but I want to talk politics. Like I want to talk about everything that is out there. And yeah, to a certain extent, you know, sometimes people perceive it in, in not a great thing, but to me, it never really to me it was always just a platform to do you know I, mm -hmm. i love i love the opportunity we have today you mm -hmm. know and and you you doing it and you're doing an amazing job of, of talking Thank about you, you know and, and kind of show helping me to kind of tell my story to the world right mm -hmm. and like i you know everything that i've done 46 uh, episodes is about showing the other person you know beauty of the way he thinks and artists and comedians and whoever it is and be a platform for some good you know it's you know this is really the basic of it and i'll talk to everyone i talk from the left wing parties to the yeah. right wing to uh basketball to soccer to, to whoever um so everything is on the table to talk and have a good conversation and you know today this is this is many and this is i think relates to many of the ways that people now kind of consume media today yeah. you know it's I on agree. demand I agree. it's available They want to hear it from us, you know, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm always anxious. Like I see you play for so many years. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm now fortunate to, to see how educated you are. You, I didn't know, but Othello told me yesterday when I was prepping for the call, mm -hmm. that you're doing your own homework. You don't have anyone doing it for you. Like, yeah. look at the question this guy asked me, like if you have interviewers on TV, making, you know, seven figures, not, not having these kind of conversations, you know, and asking these questions. So, You do it on your own, like you, you really thorough in your conference. Like it's just, this is, you know, and also you, you see like why you became the player you became. So thank you. I, thank you, man. You know, it's a, I think it's a, it's a great privilege to do that. Thank you. Now, now, one of the things that I guess all of us, you know, when we create this, I guess, create these podcasts or create this media thing is the anxiety of how people are going to perceive it. So were you surprised Absolutely. about the the reaction or the, the positive reaction? Because I see like, you know, you have a lot of subscribers. I read a lot of the comments and a lot of people, you know, love what you're doing you know, or even the guests that have come on. Have you been surprised about the the reaction of, you know, of people? To a certain extent, I was, I was definitely anxious in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, because pretty much, I think I'm the first athlete to really do it. Now there's, yeah. I think, more guys coming up in Israel to do it. Uh, but it's very common and popular in the U.S. You have David yeah. Reddick, you have KD did it, doing his own thing, and, and some other guys, some guys, you know, all the smoke, which is really good. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt Barnes that I played with. Um, so I was anxious a little bit, but, you know, like like I said, there's some people that always not going to like things, but there's mm -hmm. people, you know, and thank God, you know, we've been voted to be the number one pod interview podcast in the country. So oh, Congrats, man. That, congrats. You know, that's, that's, that's a big, that's a big accomplishment. It's great to people... <laughs> You know, so people people yeah. appreciate it and I enjoy it. You know, I enjoy, you know, having a good conversation. You know, some people like and I respect everyone's free time to do whatever mm -hmm. they want. Right. So I enjoy, you know, once a month, twice a month, sitting for an hour, 45 minutes with somebody I like or, or not necessarily like, but I want to talk to and kind of yeah. pick his brain and talk to him about stuff. Right? I spend a little time preparing and I enjoy it. This is like my free time. Right. I, I really like it. So. Um, I think, you know, I think I find it very, you know, interesting and it's great for me. Do you see the trend, and you spoke about it um, just a little bit, but do you see the trend um, of athlete-led content or athlete-led podcasts um, picking up in Europe like it has in the States? Like you said, everybody, LeBron has his own network, you know, Derek Jeter with, you know, the Players' Tribune and, you right. know, all these, all these basketball players or football players or just athletes in general in the States, you know, have this content. Um, and it's very rare, like you said, yourself and, you know, maybe a, maybe one or two or three other people um, here in Europe that are having podcasts or having this type of stuff. Do you see the trend, you know, picking up and do you, you know, what do you, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? I really hope so. Um, I think, I think it's a process. Uh, you know, now we're starting to see a shift, right? That, as veterans and guys that, are helping to kind of shape the future of your league players with the player association and kind of taking ownership of, of what's going on. Uh, in, in the NBA is very uh, uh, player centered in a sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, players have their own 
thing. You know, they did their own, like you get to a city, you can do your thing. Nobody gets into your business in Europe. It's much more of like, you have team dinners, team yeah. lunch, team breakfast. Everything is teams, like, which is good to like, whatever. It's good to, to whatever it is, but like you don't have the freedom that the NBA, NBA players. So now we're starting to take ownership of having no stickers on the court and having, you know, our own private rooms, et cetera. So slowly, I think it will, gradually, I think, players would be more comfortable of doing more. And we have so many, like, you know, we have guys on one team. We have Croatians, Israelis, mm -hmm. Americans. And, you know, some of the conversations we've had on our team, it's like, you'd be mind blown, you know? Yeah. And I think guys should start to kind of build their brand and they have a platform. Social media today allows you to talk directly to millions of people, you know, and hundreds of thousands of people uh, and to have a positive impact. And I think, You're starting to see that, you know, gradually kind of growing in Europe as well. Now, uh, if you had a dream guest for your podcast, who would, who would that be? If you had your the one person that you've been either trying to get or the one person you're like, this is if I got this one person on my show, this would be this would be it. Who is that? Who is that one person? Good question. Wow. That's a good question right there. Um, the first guy to come to mind mm -hmm. is, is, is MJ. Uh -huh. just, just, just Michael, you know, I, uh, when you start saying, you start asking the question, I was like, all right, MJ just popped, yeah. right? So I'll go with MJ. Now it's like, all right, I have a little bit more time to think. MJ is, is still there, mm -hmm. but like, I would love to pick the brands of like the Elon Musk or, yeah. or the Jay-Z yeah. uh, and some other people like that. Like, maybe even like a little bit of like Kanye West, you know, yeah. I don't yeah. know. Like, I feel like his creative yeah. genius, some people that have um, some, some things that are unique, you know, about them and the way they, they digest the world, maybe a little yeah. different. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I, I think those are all <laughs> excellent choices. <laughs> Now your advice, <laughs> your advice for, um, you know, other athletes that want to start, media or a podcast or some type of content you know what advice would you give them to start you know because like a lot of i think that's the hardest part i think there's a lot of you know players a lot of athletes especially here in europe um you know not just basketball just athletes in general that want to do content or want to you know want to do something but they don't know where to start um either because you know they're they're scared or they just don't know what to do Um, so what advice would you give them as somebody, like I said, has been successful at this, you know, you know, over, over, over this, over this period of time. Yes. First and foremost, like, don't be, you know, don't be scared of anything, you know, mm -hmm. you talk, just, just put your mind to something and, and the life, you know, life has taught me that everything is possible. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, just, just do it. And I think personally, like a lot of times, you know, maybe even when I was younger in, in the U S like. Don't try to humiliate anyone else. Be yourself. Be, yeah. the, the, you know, show your that's true colors, right? That's, that's I'm different than you. you you're different than someone else. And if we all going to be alike, it's, it's going to be boring. And, yeah. and then you also the, the fans and, and the people who consume, they, 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 it's not authentic, right? It's not like be you. You, you know, these are, this is who you are and, and people are going to relate to who you are. And, you know, yeah, there are certain things that you should, follow some guidelines, but at the end of the day, be you and let your true colors come out. And this is what people relate. They, they like authentic, they like it on demand. They like to have their their um, their media consumed to them in, in, in the way that it is now and, and just go for it, you know? And I mean, I'm sure you're anxious in the beginning, maybe in the first few, of how, how to do things. And, mm -hmm. um, but, but then, you know, it's, you're doing an amazing job. So what, what did you think? Um, For me, it was more or less just, like I just I was uncomfortable in the beginning um, because, you know, just, you know, just generally just speaking or just, you know, public speaking or just trying to figure out because like I never, never done this before. And, you know, I just got to the point where I was like, you I know what, I'm just it. I'm just going to try it and I'm just going to try it. And I was like, you know, I feel like, you know, if people like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. And I'm just going to try it and I'm just going to put it out there. And like you said, I'm just going to be myself. And, you know, and like you said before, I just enjoy having conversations with people. I enjoy learning about people. I enjoy learning about, you know, who people really are outside of, you know, what outside of the surface, you know, 
just understanding people more. Um, and that's really just what got me going. Like, I just wanted to, I just started interviewing people that I just felt that were interesting and I wanted to learn more and I was curious about. And then next thing you know, um, I became, you know, more and more comfortable with it. So that's kind of, you know. I had the same thing for me. When you go into an interview and they ask you questions, you know, yeah. we've, we've done a million of them already, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's coming naturally now, but when you got to be the one holding the interview, mm-hmm. you know, you ask a question and you have some sort of a follow-up and what if, you know, I was ne- like nervous. I didn't want the conversation to be stuck. Right. So yeah. I always, you know, at the beginning I was kind of like, now you have all these different questions that just come out pretty, you know, more naturally. So, yeah. but just preparing and doing my own work and getting ready and, you know, it's fun. Now, where do you see the future of your podcast and then also your future of media is it something that you like you said are you just sticking to this one podcast platform or do you want to grow it um like you said now that you guys have been the number one you know number one podcast you know you know interview podcast in the country so you know where where do you see this you know moving forward you know i usually like when i start to do things you know i always like to have some sort of a purpose to yeah. the thing right i don't like to do things for nothing just for you know call it for fun right there's some sort of a purpose and i think the purpose for me is is to have a platform and to share some of the values that i believe in um and be able to talk about them and have a, a good genuine conversation with people then I think essentially the idea is to kind of grow it. Uh, I want to take it to another level from that perspective of I want to now it's like, all right, I've, I've, I've tried this better, you know, making my podcast in some sort of a studio. I want to do like a super cool studio. I want it to be like the go to podcast, you know, and, and to, to expand it. Like today, you know, the, the future of media is is, is changing rapidly. Mm-hmm. Things are moving fast and we got to adapt. And yeah. the way people consume media today is different. And um and as value and i, I want to be there somewhere you know i, I want to to kind of keep pushing the narrative on that yeah man i think you like i said man if you you've done that and you're continuing to do that man so i mean my hat's off to you yeah. continuously so my, my last two questions for before i let you get out of here i know so you got a busy schedule you know i don't want i don't oh, want to no, hold I, you too I, much I on your day this. off <laughs> Um, yeah. your, your advice to younger athletes who want to have a successful career, both on and off the playing field, basketball court, however, what would your advice be? It, if I can summarize everything into one is, is, is it's a trait I like the most is, mm-hmm. is be humble. Mm-hmm. When you're humble, you can listen more, you can listen better. You're not afraid of confrontations. You don't think somebody's trying to take something from you. When you're humble, you're staying ready, you're working hard, you're not getting too high, you're never really getting too low. Um, and I think humble, being humble, but also obviously, you know, bring your passion out and, and compete and do all that sort of stuff on and off the court. Um, but it's a, I think it's a beautiful trait and I think you can accomplish anything in life. And, and when you're humble, you're willing to listen more than more than, than anything, right? And even now, I get, you know, like I said, you know, I'm talking about Elon Musk and other people, but like having a chance to learn and not think, I know I'm Mr. Know-it-all, right? Yeah. I, I know what I know, but like, I'm always yeah. free to listen to different ideas and, you know, advices and like, all right, I want to, I want to, like, I go to having a good game with Maccabi. I, first thing I go into that, Cold tub, whatever. I see with hotel. I'm like, what you think? Your mind that. Mm-hmm. Like, what do, what do you mm-hmm. see out there? You know, like, mm-hmm. yeah, I have my opinion, but like, show me something that I missed, or give me another perspective of what's going on. And then I go to whoever, Scotty. What do you see? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. What can you do better? But I know I have some sort of an opinion of what's going on and what. But like, I want to hear it first. I want to, and I want to shape an opinion that I, I kind of. Feel. So I think it's it's very important for life. I think and and from that point you can do it in business. You can do it in anything, and and you can just flourish, man. Like just go out and flourish, man. Like we all like, we should start. We should start, you know, together as 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 a community, as athletes. You know, I love, you know, on my Twitter now I start to like retweet like when I see other Americans play. I mean, I yeah. played with them in the past where they play here and they do good. Hey. Put it out there, you know, I have whatever, whatever amount of followers I have, but I want to start like, why not? Yeah, we go on the court, we compete, you know, yeah. whatever. But we we go, we both want to win. But like, I want to push these guys, you know, let's, you know, 
for some reason in the past, maybe it was like the competition got in the way. To me, I want to see these guys succeed. I want to make yeah. a lot of money. I want them to have a great life for them, for the family. They're good people, and I'm, I'm all for it, you know? So being humble, I think, is, is the basis of all. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful, man. Definitely, definitely wise words, man. Definitely wise words. Last question, and I'm going to let you get out of here. Your favorite current EuroLeague player and your favorite past EuroLeague Ooh. player. So watch, that's not, that's not okay. your favorite current EuroLeague player that's not playing for Maccabi. That you just like, you know, it's an entertaining player. I enjoy watching. Okay. And your favorite past EuroLeague player. It could be on Maccabi. Okay, so my favorite past was Anthony Parker. AP mm -hmm. was, um, yeah, the, the, the way he did things is like MJ like in yeah. Europe. You know, he controlled Europe, he's back to back MVPs, back to back championships. Um, and about not to cut you off, class, but, but, but selfishly, I, I kind of wish he didn't go to Toronto. Like, selfishly, like, I wish he uh -huh. would have stayed, like, I wish he would have stayed in Europe, and I wish I would have, like, even though I was younger, like I said, but I, I just love watching old games and stuff. I want to see, like, how much more dominant he could have been, like, if he would have stayed more in Europe. Yeah. But I agree. I, I mean, I loved, you know, he was so, like, humble mm -hmm. and the way he carried himself on and off the floor, you know, it was just amazing. He was an unbelievable player, unbelievable person, you know, and, you know, he wanted to go out and, and accomplish himself in the league, you know, and and, and at, at the end, he was a starter, yeah. a good starter on the yeah. championship caliber team, you know, yeah. and, and, and it's just a class act. Current um, player that I really like, I, I know, and I, a lot of guys. And I know it's in our nature to be like, oh, I don't like any of these guys. I, like, I know, I know, like competitively, you're like, I don't want to. <laughs> when I get when I get asked that question, I'm like, ah, I don't want to. I don't want to say anybody because I don't want to give them that competitive edge. But <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I like a lot of guys. You know, uh -huh. I mean, I played with Sofia Rodriguez in Sacramento together, and I love mm -hmm. his game. You know, he's older now, more mature. I like seeing older players because they bring something different to the game. You know, mm -hmm. they're not, you know, they're not going full speed all the time. They have their own pace. Like, like I told you in the beginning, I love watching you play, right? Thank but why is you have your pace to the game. You see the game different. You defensively and, and the charisma and the, the presence you have on the court is, is, is just different. It's just different. You. It is what it is. A young player cannot, cannot, it just, it takes time. Like, it takes time to pick it up, you know. So, you know, all the guys that I love, I mean, like I said, I love I love your game. I, mean, I love Otello's. Mm -hmm. I think Otello is phenomenal. He's obviously playing with us. Sergio, I mean, so many guys. Uh, I love, uh, these are some of the guys that, I mean, I have many more. I just, I hope I didn't hurt anyone's feelings. But Gigi, that told me, I'll, me and Gigi played together, mm -hmm. I think, against each other. Italy against Israel, under 18 national team. Mm -hmm. Talking maybe... 17 years ago you know so <laughs> we go way back we go way back um and there's other guys right um and also there's guys that have been in europe and went to the league and six you know mm -hmm. it's great to see as well so no uh, it's always great all right so before i let you go um please you know uh let the people know where they can find you on social media um also you know your podcast sure. and, and everything like that man this is your time to you know shout out shout out everything that you're doing yeah yeah, so we we, we post our, our our full podcast now on YouTube and Spot and, and all mm -hmm. the Spotify Apple Podcasts and all that sort of stuff. So we can see Omri Cassie podcast um, and social media. It's always been Cassie eighteen eighteen being my number. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, all that sort of stuff. Facebook. Um, it's an honor. It's an honor to be here, brother. I, I really appreciate you doing sure. a beautiful thing. I, I love everything about it. Uh, keep shining. Thank you, man. Uh, and I see you, I see you around, uh, around the league. We'll see each other again. Thank you, man, man. Best of luck the, the rest of the way. Um, stay healthy. Stay safe. Um, all the best to, you, to your family Amen. and everybody. Um, like I said, man, I look forward to, you know, us, you know, catching up, you know, off the air, um, you know, real soon. Oh, yeah. um, and I'm sure we got to, you know, we, we know a lot of the same people and we've heard, you know, like I said, I've heard so many great things about you. So um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to them that time to spend some, you know, extended amount of time with you. Absolutely, my brother. Appreciate right, you having me. Appreciate it, man. Take care.